Peking man, Homo erectus pekinensis, is an example of Homo erectus. A group of fossil specimens was discovered in 1923-27 during excavations at Zhou Kudian near Beijing, China. In 2009 the finds were dated from roughly 750,000 years ago, and a new 26L 10B dating suggests they are in the range of 680,000 minus 780,000 years old. Between 1929 and 1937, 15 partial crania, 11 mandibles, many teeth, some skeletal bones and large numbers of stone tools were discovered in the lower cave at locality 1 of the Peking Man site at Zhou Kudian, near Beijing, in China. Their age is estimated to be between 500,000 and 300,000 years old. The most complete fossils, all of which were calvarie, are Skull 2, discovered at Locusti in 1929 but only recognized in 1930, is an adult or adolescent with a brain size of 1030 cc. Scully.jpg. Skull 3, discovered at Locusi in 1929 is an adolescent or juvenile with a brain size of 915 cc. Skull IE.jpg. Skulls X, she and 12 were discovered at Locusel in 1936. They are thought to belong to an adult man, an adult woman and a young adult, with brain sizes of 1,225 cc, 1,015 cc and 1,030 cc respectively. Skullx.jpg Skullshi.jpg Skullxii.jpg Skull V Two cranial fragments were discovered in 1966 which fit with two other fragments found in 1934 and 1936 to form much of a skull cap with a brain size of 1140 cc. These pieces were found at a higher level and appear to be more modern than the other skull caps. Skull V.JPG most of the study on these fossils was done by Davidson Black until his death in 1934. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin took over until Franz Weidenreich replaced him and studied the fossils until he left China in 1941. The original fossils disappeared in 1941, but excellent casts and descriptions remain. Discovery and Identification Swedish geologist Johan Gunnar Andersen and American paleontologist Walter W. Granger came to Zhou Kudian, China in search of prehistoric fossils in 1921. They were directed to the site at Dragonbone Hill by local quarrymen, where Anderson recognized deposits of quartz that were not native to the area. Immediately realizing the importance of this find he turned to his colleague and announced, here is primitive man, now all we have to do is find him. Excavation work was begun immediately by Anderson's assistant Austrian paleontologist, Otto Zidansky, who found what appeared to be a fossilized human molar. He returned to the site in 1923, and materials excavated in the two subsequent digs were sent to Uppsala University in Sweden for analysis. In 1926 Anderson announced the discovery of two human molars in this material, and Zidansky published his findings. Canadian anatomist Davidson Black of Peking Union Medical College, excited by Anderson and Zidansky's find, secured funding from the Rockefeller Foundation and recommenced excavations at the site in 1927 with both Western and Chinese scientists. Swedish paleontologist Anders Birgabol and unearthed a tooth that fall, and Black placed it in a gold locket on his watch chain. Black published his analysis in the journal Nature, identifying his find as belonging to a new species and genus which he named Synanthropus pecanensis. But many fellow scientists were skeptical about such an identification on the basis of a single tooth and the foundation demanded more specimens before it would agree to grant additional money. A lower jaw, several teeth, and skull fragments were unearthed in 1928. Black presented these finds to the foundation and was rewarded with an $80,000 grant that he used to establish the Cenozoic Research Laboratory. Excavations at the site under the supervision of Chinese archaeologists 
Yang Zhongzhan, Pei Wenzong, and Jia Lampo uncovered 200 human fossils from more than 40 individual specimens. These excavations came to an end in 1937 with the Japanese invasion. Excavations at Jokudian resumed after the war. The Peking Man site at Jokudian was listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1987. New excavations were started at the site in June 2009. Paleontological Conclusions the first specimens of Homo erectus had been found in Java in 1891 by Eugene Dubois, but were dismissed by many as the remains of a deformed ape. The discovery of the great quantity of finds at Jokudian put this to rest and Java man, who had initially been named Pithecanthropus erectus, was transferred to the genus Homo along with Peking man. Contiguous findings of animal remains and evidence of fire and tool usage, as well as the manufacturing of tools, were used to support H. Erectus being the first Faber, or tool worker. The analysis of the remains of Peking Man led to the claim that the Joku Dian and Java fossils were examples of the same broad stage of human evolution. This interpretation was challenged in 1985 by Lewis Binford, who claimed that Peking Man was a scavenger, not a hunter. Relation to modern humans Franz Weidenreich considered Peking Man as a human ancestor and specifically an ancestor of the Chinese people, as seen in his original multi-regional model of human evolution in 1946. Chinese writings on human evolution in 1950 generally considered evidence insufficient to determine whether Peking man was ancestral to modern humans. One view was that Peking man in some ways resembled modern Europeans more than modern Asians. But this debate of the origin has sometimes become complicated by issues of Chinese nationalism according to Barry Sotman. By 1952 Peking Man was considered by some to be a direct ancestor of modern humans. Some paleontologists have noted a perceived continuity in skeletal remains. Present status the fossils of Peking Man were stored at the Union Medical College in Peking. Eyewitness accounts state that in 1941, while Beijing was under Japanese occupation, but just before the outbreak of hostilities between Japan and the Allied forces during the Second World War, the fossils were packed into two large crates and loaded onto a U.S. Marine vehicle bound for the port of Qinhuangdao in northern China close to the marine base at Camp Holcomb. From there they were to be sent by ship to the American Museum of Natural History in New York, but the fossils vanished en route. Various attempts have been made to locate the fossils, but so far without success. In 1972 U.S. financier Christopher Janus offered a $5,000 reward for the missing skulls. One woman contacted him asking for $500,000 but she subsequently vanished. In July 2005, to coincide with the 60th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, the Chinese government set up a committee to find the bones. Theories about the fate of the bones range from their having been on board a Japanese ship, or an American ship that was sunk, to being ground up for traditional Chinese medicine. Four of the teeth, however, are still in the possession of the Paleontological Museum of Uppsala University.